So I saw this trend the other day that college students and students are basically time blocking every second of their day. And this apparently is a cool trend right now. I wish I was in college at that time. Time blocking has become an incredibly popular way of seeing what you need to do in the time. And there are so many benefits to it. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to time block, how to practically do it and get started straight away. So what are some of the benefits of time blocking? The first of the benefits is more control of your day. The second is reduced overwhelm. There's just a lot less panic when you can see what you're doing. And the third is a clear focus on priorities. So what is time blocking very simply? Well, it's basically the act of assigning blocks of time to specific tasks. It's different from a to-do list because in a to-do list, you see a line or a list of tasks that things you need to do. But in a time blocked area, you're correlating time to the task itself and blocking out a period of time to focus on that. So the tool that I'm using in today's video is today's sponsor and it's Sunsama. If you're interested in checking it out because you like the look of it, then you can find it linked below. So let's just look at why time blocking helps. So it limits over commitment. So as you can see here, it shows you what can actually fit in your day. There are a certain amount of hours that you have in a day and being able to see what you've got is a benefit. Sometimes if you load up loads of tasks, you're over committing how many you can do. And that is great for visuals. It also improves focus because one block equals one task. It's a really orientated thing and helps you to just keep zoned in when you're on that period of time. And normally you can see where you are in a day as well. And the final thing is it reduces stress by creating structure and that can be a good structure. So let's load up some tasks here as an example of how that can be used. As you can see, I can't overload my day here. So let's look at how you actually time block. So let's start breaking our big tasks into small tasks. If I add something like a uh, write report, that report could be 3000 words, it could be 5000 words, but it's quite overwhelming. So let's write, I don't know, write a quarter of report. It's more actionable and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that big task into a small block. Then I'm going to add it to a time block that's coming up today. I can also go ahead and add buffer zones inside the tasks I do, which indicate breaks or time for me to zone out a bit. That buffer time is very, very important to you. And you can indicate a different color if you find that more suitable. But taking breaks is a great way to make sure you're not overloading yourself and your tasks. So you can adjust as you go. Some people like to time block three hours in advance to plan their morning and then do the afternoon afterwards. It helps keep that stress and overwhelm sort of there. But if you want to, you can block a whole day out or a whole week out, which might be a good technique. Now, there are other things you can do in terms of practical time blocking. You can go ahead and block out things you commonly do in a day. For example, it could be lunchtime. It could be uh, routine based stuff like brushing your teeth all the way to walking home. If you do something at a consistent time every single day and that's not affected by things like meetings or acti other activities, then it could be helpful to create a recurring task or a recurring calendar event that will help you to have that in place as you're using uh, and time blocking. So there's some additional things you can do. Some apps don't do this, but Sansama does in this case. You can import tasks like emails, Todoist, or maybe even other apps like ClickUp that you use for work. Maybe you wanna bring stuff in and time block that. So you can do that in summer by just dragging the task in. Being able to use these task consolidation platforms can be a great time saver. So it's well worth checking out whether your tool can do something like this. So one of the things you can do is reshuffle your day and it helps you to reduce that stress and get in control of what you're doing in terms of your structure. So who's gonna actually benefit from something like time blocking? Well, students who are planning revisions and arrangements can really benefit from it. Professionals of packed schedules that wanna be able to visualize what their time is being spent on is a great way to do it. As well as those who want to force uh, meetings away from meetings so making sure you block the time for yourself so people don't book stuff when you need to be doing that deep focus work and people with ADHD who struggle with distractions who might find benefit from this as well. So some little bonus additional benefits to time blocking that you can implement. Colors can help you to represent types of activities or intensity of activities. You could use something like the Benta methodology which we created inside something like Sensama with red tasks for large tasks, medium tasks with orange and blue with uh, lighter tasks that you can do. That might give you a visual representation of the energy that you need to put into each task. You could also do it based on the type of task it could be whether you're interacting with somebody or whether it requires your deep focus work. Another thing that I highly recommend is going into focus states when you're actually doing that task, reducing distractions, 
Um, I'm currently reading a book called Indistractable by Nia Eyal, who's coming here on the channel soon. And it's one of the most interesting books around how you should monofocus on the thing that you're in hand and timers can dramatically help like that. So using the Pomodoro timer or other systems, Sunsama has a baked in one that you can use is a great way to stay on focus and on task. So just to recap, what do we learn about time blocking? It's a very simple methodology, but the key thing is that you're visually seeing instead of over committing. And it's a great way to plan a time out. But one of the things that people get commonly mistaken about time blocking is that they shouldn't necessarily want to block their entire time out. Sometimes the intensity of blocking an entire week out can be quite overwhelming. So you can do stuff in the morning or the afternoon or just a day ahead or maybe one or two days ahead. Maybe just the week ahead if you're feeling uh, ambitious. But at the same time, it can be a flexible system that you can use every single day to visualize your tasks and your work together. So you can try Sansama today for free and it will be linked below in this video if you're interested in exploring it further. It's a great tool. I've used it in the past and I found it very beneficial for visualizing what I need to do. And they've got some great features with guided planning to really fine tune and make sure you're time blocking effectively. So thanks very much. I'll see you very soon. Please do check out us here on YouTube if you want to dig deeper into concepts like this. Thank you very much for now and I'll see you very soon.